Hello internet friends, thank you for joining me for the first unboxing of a vintage toy on my YouTube channel. I've been collecting for about three years now and I've been focusing on retro and reissue toys. It's been a real, it's a good time to get into collecting and a lot of the old lines that I remember from the 80s and 90s have been re-released. You can see some of them in the background, Turtles, Ghostbusters, He-Man. Transformers is always going on so I've been collecting those but I've always known that at some point I want to branch out into vintage collecting. The question is where to start. The prices of things are very expensive these days uh, depending on what license you choose to focus on but also what issue what where in that license you decide to start so for instance if you were to start with star wars and you went for the vintage this is a really obvious example to anyone who's a collector you go for the early vintage stuff uh, uh carded uh star wars not empire strikes back the prices are astronomical but if you were to say well i'm going to collect loose and I'm going to collect Return of the Jedi vintage things. You can you can modify what you're going to collect, and that's what I've done here. I've decided on a line that I think, ah, if I go for the stuff that's not actually the real premium first issue stuff, and things that I still remember, but maybe the second issue of figures that are less in demand. They're still vintage, but they are not as costly, and uh, it's it's more of a palatable entry point into vintage collecting. So I made some purchases on eBay, and that's what I'm going to unbox in this video. Uh, we have a few things to consider. The fact that uh, I don't know the sellers that I bought them from. They seemed good from the pictures. Uh, they in half decent condition. I'm also keeping it a bit of a secret as to what it is. If I've done my job with the thumbnail, you might have some ideas if you're a, a veteran collector as to what these are, but I'm, I'm thinking I'll make it mysterious so we don't know from the start. Uh, yeah, so I don't know the sellers. They could be in poor condition. I did, uh, they seem to have been delivered okay. One box is a little bit better packaged than the other one. This one is a bit dented at the top. They could have done a better job there of protecting things it's a bit of a crapshoot on ebay uh but yeah I, uh, in terms of the condition uh and is it the right item that kind of thing an interesting thing happened to me in that uh, before i got the one of this thing that i got i did do a bid on another auction and i learned that uh things can be dicey on ebay so this person had put up the up, uh, the buy now option but you could also make an offer so I made an offer and the offer was accepted and you have to put in your bank details to make an offer in the first place then the guy who got back to me said oh it was a misclick I don't want uh, <laughs> I don't want to accept the offer so I've relisted the item but of course at that point that person has now got my money so <laughs> that was a bit of a shock, a learning curve for me. It's okay, that guy was on the level and he did a refund for me. But I didn't realise that was a thing. So if someone was after ripping you off on eBay, they could do that and get your money and just vanish, I guess. I think there are safeties on eBay as well, but it's worth bearing in mind as you get into this kind of thing, because obviously vintage stuff is, you're going to be going to eBay and um, I'm hoping at some point I get in touch with other vintage collectors and um, get into some kind of network of people who know things and perhaps have things to sell, but I'm not at that stage at the moment. So without further ado, let's have a look at these items can you guess what they are it's exciting isn't it for me perhaps only what will it be like inside it's not particularly well protected this guy, this one you always have to cover up your address online as well it's like i always think wow well, that's been a bit over the top isn't it you're not a famous person who's going to get a load of uh potential abuse from internet people but I suppose there are people who've got nothing better to do than turn shit through the letterbox. <laughs> I don't know. I, I bet it doesn't, you know. Well, don't put your address out for the whole internet. What would I do if people came around? I saw your video and I saw your address. I just thought I'd pop round to say hello. Oh, you're welcome to. Oh, Express. 
What's this? Oh, there's my details. Don't worry, I've got editing skills. We can, we can block that out. All right. Okay, very delicate with vintage toys. They can't be replaced very easily. I do like this though, UPS. All right, are you ready? Steady. The mystery is about to be, did you see that? What color is that thing under there? I think it's the right, I think we know that the right thing has come through the post anyway. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Wow, that is actually in minty mint condition. That's really good. That might be even better than it looked on the pictures. So these were the second line of Ghostbusters figures that came out after the initial release, these fright features. And I remember having them, fond memories of all of these, but like I say, because they are not those initial uh, release, this is a this is a re-release. But that's what I'm talking about when I say the initial Ghostbusters. And these were the second entry. I did read a really interesting, uh, I was watching an interesting video but that made the observation that these fright features, so you, you pull Venkman's arm and his eyes bug out. So basically your action figure, you can make them terrified of the ghosts, which is kind of weird for your heroes to be the, the what's the play feature here? They can all shit themselves. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that looks really nice, doesn't it? The seller did say that it's coming off a little bit of the side here and it is, but only very slightly. Uh, it's still there. like this is 30 years old and, and this is still stuck to the card. We might actually be able to peg this up and put it next to my reissues and I, and I wouldn't be too worried about it falling off. We'll have a closer look in a second. So that's Venkman. I don't want to give away my all my cards too early, but I have decided to be thematic and not go random with stuff. So the, so the next one is from the same line but I'll let you have a guess as to who it might be. This one's really nicely boxed up. I'm sorry, by the way, I've been a bit under the weather, so I've got a, a rather croaky voice at the moment. It's not the best time to be doing a video, but I have another YouTube channel that's all about computer games called Nap Yet, where I review games and talk about games. And I've been wanting to do a video for that all week. And that's voiceover. Uh, you don't see my face. It's less relaxed. So it, you have to sound somewhat, particularly when you, it's just your voice. You can't be croaky on videos like that. Um, these are more kind of chill videos. So oh, I've just been desperate to do, do a video of some kind. So when these arrived both today from different people, I didn't expect it. So that was nice that they've both arrived at the same time. Oh, I like this person being thrifty in terms of packaging material. I know what that's like. Done a little bit of selling on eBay myself. Um, but this person is doing it more sensibly. I, I bought actual you know, packing paper like this in sheets. Um, just use the thing. Ah, I put this out. Rebel Trading Post is where I got it. They're an eBay seller. Buy and sell toys and collectibles. Find us on Facebook at, can I, eBay, rebel underscore trading underscore outpost. Bit of a shout out for those guys. They sent me a nice message. Seem, seem like pleasant people. Your item is on the way. And Ray, Ray stands. These are great purchases for the second, for the first vintage purchases I've made, I am very happy with these. This guy is a little bit more creased up and there's some interesting, let me get this out of the way. There's an interesting variation there in terms of the fright features text. So you can see quite a big difference there. 
with the more recent releases of the Ghostbusters, um, you have these European releases that have different um, language spelling for the European release or things down there. And then the packaging for the American release, all in English. So I wonder if this, this is the similar thing. This is the fright, fright features from like the just the American release, and then they changed um, the logo and text for a European release. I don't know because then I've seen ones for fright features that are in this style font, but without the translation in a different language. So I'm really unsure. Um, but yeah, I had all of these guys and it was just a little bit later in. Um, I was a little bit of a glutton with it as a kid. I really, um, I wanted everything. So a lot of these lines I did keep collecting and some of them I collected longer than I should have done into like 13, 14 when my friends were getting out of it and I was a little bit stunted in that regard. But uh, so I do have memory of the later figures in some of these lines, the turtles as well. They were later than Ghostbusters and some of the later turtles I was getting as well. Just lubricate my throat a bit. One thing I did like about these, I don't predict, the fright feature is a silly gimmick, I think. It's fun, but you know, once you've done it once or twice, I'm not sure how repeatable it is as a as a fun play feature, but one thing I did like with these, and I remember thinking this as a kid, was that these, the Ray, the Ray, he's called Ray, but the actual proton beam Ray, uh, was a really stupid thing. It made it really hard to store, you know, when you're moving the figures around and stuff, it just, it just made them harder to play with. And if you had any of the toys, for instance, you know, sit them in the car with the proton pack on their back. Now you can't do that because of that stupid beam that's out all the time. I much preferred, well, I thought this was an interesting variation in that they just have these different kinds of weapons. They stuck with the, the various little ghosts that you get with them. I always thought that was a fun feature. They didn't have to add a ghost with all these figures, but if you didn't have any of the packaged ghosts, you got one in the packet with the main guy. So I did go for, initially, I went for Ray, uh, no, I went for Venkman. Now I wish I'd really got it um, because the same seller who sent me this one was selling Egon as well. And that's the first one of these fright features that I did get. But unfortunately, someone beat me on that um, auction uh, and it went for more than I was willing to spend at the time. But now I've seen the condition of that. I think it would have been worth getting hold of it if the Egon was anything, uh, anything like that. So um, just have a look at the back. But the one thing that was weird about the ray that I did go for, that one where the guy uh, misclicked and uh, erroneously accepted my offer then didn't, was that it was a version of ray, but without uh, this, you know, the image on the back, it was just plain card. So I don't think it was, I mean, it could have potentially been a, a copycat um a fake card but the guy suggested it was a production error which i can buy as well so i don't know i don't know if anyone is more clued into this type of stuff than me in terms of these you know the fright features information and text on the front please let me know um but unlike collecting say star wars or transformers which has a really in-depth wiki and loads of information stuff like this is is a little bit more obscure obscure and that is what i'm hoping to do with my collecting uh, i've deliberately steered clear of star wars because that's a whole rabbit hole and i have collected i was an avid collector of star wars as a kid and I don't want to, I just want to do something different this time. That's a whole, that's like a hobby within a hobby. If you're doing Star Wars, you're doing Star Wars. Whereas I, I like lots of different lines and I've done it before. I started recollecting Star Wars in my twenties when the prequels came out and it just feels like I've done there, I've been there. I want to focus on things that 
I haven't collected in the past. Um, that's why I've got no Star Well, my brother bought me some Star Wars uh, vintage, so I, I have put them up on the wall. But have a look at this. See, see how it, see how these guys look. Because I'm really happy with how how they look. We can't put him up. Oh, I just noticed that is unpunched. So that is adds to the value a little bit. I don't think these are ever going to be astronomical in terms of value, but have a look with my other Ghostbusters stuff. Yeah, so this is how I've got my Ghostbusters at the minute, just up on pegs like that, because they're reissues and stuff and they're plentiful. They're not too rare, you know, we've not got to keep them in incredible condition and Venkman could go up there. However, I'm going to have to really push to get that in that peg. That peg is kind of small. And anyway, having them hanging just seems like, well, gravity is eventually going to pull that bubble off. So I would feel better just having them, I think, like that, if they stand. Now he's going to fall forward. Yeah. So I need to figure something out in terms of how we're going to display these guys. I'll tell you what, actually, we could do this. Took them behind like that and use that to stop them falling forward use your brethren above I mean I do want them on display you know those um, the vintage things I suppose if you're collecting vintage really what you should be doing is putting everything in a lovely air conditioned sealed box and never uh, take it out, but where's the fun in that? I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I wish I had more information to say about the fright features. I think I need to do a little bit of research about them when they were released and so on. But there are there are some of these ghosts are out there. Granny Ghost is one that is very easy to get. It seems I really remember the dustbin guy. Um, I had all of them pretty much. No, not all of them actually. I definitely had the dustbin dude. Uh, yeah, and the main guys. And I think I had Janine as well. I've seen some Janines up there for not too much money. Very few Winstons that I've seen. So as a focus, I think this is an interesting place to start. It's not at the very high end. It's a line that I remember fondly. And if you want them it carded, in packaged condition they the, you can get them it's reasonable at this stage i do have some ideas for other lines i'm not going to go just carded vintage collecting um i'm quite interested in getting hold of some rock lords i i think i want to focus on let me turn the camera around i can't remember what i was saying now yeah but basically i i'm i'm looking at different lines battle beast is another one that i remember fondly but i want to go a little bit niche with it and my i have these big collections that loom large like transformers and star wars from my childhood but i realize now that i was into everything all kinds of crazy things and the battle beasts if you want them carded it's ridiculous, but they are really readily available. And that's another fun line I could be collecting. Um, if you know anything about the fright features, particularly the packaging, you know, let me know if there's any websites that cover that. I've done a quick look, but I probably need to do some more research. Maybe that's a video that I could do at some point. It's not an in-depth. There's not an in-depth look at the toys. It's more kind of like just the fun of unboxing it. And like I say, I am really happy, particularly the Venkman, but that guy looks good. Um, and check out that that eBay seller that I put um, because that's a really nice version of Ray as well. And it was reasonably priced. It arrived in plenty of time. And it, as you saw, it was well packaged. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Do watch some of the videos on the channel if you like. It's just a bit of fun for me documenting, collecting and um, that whole hobby as I've been getting out into it over the last three years. I really enjoy having a record for myself, but hopefully it's interesting for you as well. Thank you for watching. I've been Nap Yet and I'll see you next time. Bye.